Hello everyone, welcome back to my circumnavigation in the SimSkunk Works F104G in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Where I last left off, we were at Entebbe International in Uganda, and in this first flight, I am flying to Lachinga in Mozambique. This is, of course, an interesting track for our circumnavigation, and I do intend to finish it. I know it's been a long time since my previous video, but I'm hopping back into it, and I do intend to complete this flight around the world with this plane. I'm flying it because I figured it was the most difficult plane to fly in Flight Sim right now. And here, I actually touched back down on the runway even though I'm going past 200 knots. And I do have the trim set, and I do have flaps down, and... Yeah, it's tough sometimes. It's tough with this plane. It does perform differently than you might expect. For instance, it can't really get up to Mach 2 very easily. It needs to dip down in order to break the sound barrier. So overall, it's a little bit draggy, and one reason for that might be the drag modeling on it being peculiar because they wanted to make sure that the tanks on the pylons and the wingtips uh, created more drag. And so when you release those tanks, the custom drag modeling then reduces the drag. But it doesn't seem to get us to where we're supposed to go. Anyway, I decided to fly over Kampala, which is the largest city in Uganda. Uh, this is the primary city that Entebbe International services. Entebbe International, I think, is one of the handcrafted airports, so that was one reason to stop by it. That's H-U-E-N. Uh, Kampala, well, it's there, but, you know, I don't think there's any special scenery. Not that the F-104 is a great plane to get close looks at scenery with. Uh, it doesn't like going slow, so... And uh, turning quickly with it is a dangerous prospect. So this flight around the world isn't going to go close to any particular landmarks. We do get to see some interesting places though, including Lake Victoria, which I proceed to fly over, as we head down to Mozambique. The range of the plane with the tanks, if I'm pushing it as fast as I can go, is about 1,000 nautical miles which is probably underdoing it as well. Again, it does seem a little bit draggy. As a result, I plotted a course of 28 flights. So this is more than is required for a circumnavigation. Each flight is about 900 nautical miles to give some buffer, of course. And really, for circumnavigation, it's generally considered required to do 21,600 nautical miles. That's the circumference of the Earth at the equator. And we are overshooting that by quite a lot. But that's because I decided to fly over some interesting places as I get ready to release... Ah, there we go. Release the pylon tanks. And now we're going to dip down and break the sound barrier. While we have the pylon tanks, there's just no good way to break the sound barrier. You could technically go over Mach 1, but it doesn't go sufficiently over Mach 1 to make it worthwhile. And meanwhile, you're pushing the engines extra. So, uh, so I dip down and we do break the sound barrier but yeah from what i understand it is not necessary for the f-104 to lose that much height in order to go past mach 1 even with the wingtip tanks so yeah i haven't seen any update from the plane that would mitigate this and make the flight modeling a little bit better maybe the problem is with the sim but of course we do have other planes that operate correctly, but then again, they also don't have the drag modeling on the tanks, so it's complicated. So we are proceeding now past Lake Victoria, heading down over Tanzania. Landscape is interesting, though obviously not at the highest possible quality that we see in other areas, but still, at least it's visibly photo scenery, and so I appreciate that as we have lost the wingtip tanks and we chug along to the point where it actually tells me to slow which is interesting because we're only at 450 knots indicated airspeed and Mach 1.85 when this should be able to go Mach 2 and the indicated airspeed should be able to go much higher than that so I don't know why the slow indicator is even popping up at this point but I ignored it <laughs> basically uh, I was going like no this is an F-104 it should be able to do better than that here's Lake Malawi and the place that we are landing at, Lachinga, is basically on the 
east side of Lake Malawi. Lake Malawi is formed by the Great Rift Valley, where there are like three plates separating. And potentially a new continent we formed, and here I am slowing down, coming out of Afterburner. And it does this thing where it shudders when it comes out of Afterburner. And I start descending. I was fully expecting that Lachinga Airport would be a little bit hard to spot. It is also at a fairly high elevation, 4,491 feet, but it's decently long. It's a 8,300 foot runway. Fortunately, the weather was very good, as you can see, and the foliage was fairly tame as I pushed the airport compared to what I was expecting. It was pretty hilly, but not unmanageable. And you can see the runway there. And as usual with the F-104 coming in a little bit of an interesting trajectory, but it's necessary. And uh, to be honest, that's that's actually a pretty good landing with this plane. <laughs> honestly, honestly, that, that is a satisfactory landing overall. And there wasn't really taxiways here. Not a huge amount of surprise. There was at least this sort of loop back zone and I decided to park over here. Seemed like the right thing to do. And I got my time, 1 hour and 11 minutes there. And so on to the next flight. The next flight is to Madagascar. FMMI Ivato Airport there, right in the middle of Madagascar. And a little bit short of a flight than some of the other legs that I'm doing. And so I didn't really need all of the tanks. I probably could have just get, gotten by with the pylon tanks, but I decided to load all the tanks anyway. And this was during the live stream. That's why I have the background music going and the music credits in the upper left corner there. A sure sign that I am streaming while flying. And so up I go. I think this was the first flight I did during a live stream. I think the rest were all off stream. So up I go. It's a beautiful and varied landscape. I do like it when the landscape is complicated like this, if you will. Colorful. Fascinating. The only trouble with lower quality photo scenery areas is when there are seams and stuff like that. Or blurriness, of course. Sometimes the clouds baked into the terrain is a problem that occurs, and we'll see some of that right at the end. So, chugging away here through Mozambique towards Madagascar. Someday we'll have baobab trees for Madagascar. Maybe we already do, I don't know. Certainly in this plane I wasn't getting up close to the trees, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, and maybe wildlife of some kind would be nice. There may be add-ons that add stuff. I do have a mod for the Great Rift Valley that adds a lot of locations and animals. And I also have the SoFly Animals pack. So I do want these things. I do want animals, even though it's hard to spot them sometimes. Because this was a live stream, I had some company. That's Pekka flying in the F-22, having a tough time following this plane. Uh, right now I'm on autopilot while the pylon tanks drain. But once the pylon tanks go, I'm of course going to dip down and break the sound barrier. That's what I'm doing here. And that's a maneuver that the F-22 has a hard time matching. Uh, just because it's sort of a wild maneuver to begin with. It's sort of like a roller coaster ride, dipping down, breaking the sound barrier, and then going up again. Eventually, Pekka rejoins after that, you can see there. But especially because the F-104 here doesn't quite fly like the F-104 should, it's a tough plane to match up with. So here we are running out of Mozambique, the east coast of Mozambique here, and then on across to Madagascar. And somewhere once we hit water, I decided to drop the wingtip tanks and we got past, well, actually not quite past Mach 1.8. It's a little bit tough to see there and at 48,000 feet. Now the reason I stay at 46 to 48,000 feet is that it seems to consume the same amount of fuel at this altitude as it does higher up. If it consumed less fuel higher up, I'd of course go higher. But it doesn't go substantially faster higher up, but then it consumes the same amount of fuel and we take a lot of extra energy to get up there. 
it doesn't really want to get up there. It's not like what I expect from the F-104, as we see a beautiful landscape for Madagascar there. Um, it struggles to get up to 65,000 feet, and it doesn't go substantially faster. I get the feeling that they tried to limit it to Mach 2 with the drag, rather than limit it to Mach 2 because the engine would overheat or there would be some other problem like that which is probably more the reason why it was limited to Mach 2 than, you know, sheer inability to go faster. I think the F-104 could have gone faster if the engine could hold up, but uh, the reason we have the big red slow indicator is because the engine could go faster, the plane could go faster, but the engine would overheat, you know, uh, the materials would not be able to hold up, and so the pilot would actually have to throttle down rather than... Uh, the drag being so high that the plane couldn't make it. I mean, it's got those tiny wings which make it hard to fly. It's got those wings for a reason that can go fast. That's just a theory though, I'm not sure. Here we are on approach, land landing in Madagascar. Once again, the airport is FMMI. And the city name I keep forgetting, but it's a longish name that I couldn't pronounce very well. That's a bit hotter than I would like, but there's a premium plane if uh, if it was really too hard the gear should collapse or something something should tell me give me feedback on my landings to indicate that it's not a good landing That's that's my policy and I'm sticking to it. We do have taxiways here and so a little bit more model and airport I'm not sure whether it was handcrafted or not, but it's got stuff here and that was a flight of one hour and one minute so, on to the next place, and this was a tough one because we're heading to an island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Once you get to Madagascar, uh, this plane can't cross the Indian Ocean completely in one flight, so we've got to stop by somewhere, and in this case, it is the island of Rodriguez, uh, which is controlled by Mauritius, but it's an autonomous island. As I ascend here, of Madagascar. It's the island of Rodriguez because initially Mauritius was explored by the Portuguese and then there was Dutch control, then there was French control, then was there was British control. So they basically got all the imperialisms. <laughs> they were a colony of everybody at some point except for the Spanish I suppose. Interesting place but apparently nobody was particularly interested enough to give the island of Rodriguez good scenery so that's where we will see the clouds baked into the terrain there sadly enough I mean overall the photo scenery in flight sim is really great so that's why when it's not great it's rather jarring in FSX there were plenty of occasions where photo scenery that was available had clouds baked in and stuff like that color matching was bad the old days anyway departing Madagascar there the East Coast again and I'll cut out most of the journey in this flight because it's all Indian Ocean nothing much to see here very boring flight but also I haven't really gone this way across the Indian Ocean ever so I wanted to try it out this is the first time flying around here and here we are past Mach 1.8, no wingtip tanks, cruising right along. And I had to descend without really getting a good sight of the island. Didn't know what I was in for really at this point. What sort of island was it? How bad was it going to be? And there's a lot of clouds in the way, but we can see some terrain up ahead. But I certainly decided that I would fly over the airport first and not immediately try to land but basically you can see to the left well you might have caught a glimpse of it we'll get another glimpse soon that the clouds baked into the train are covering much of the island here as i keep an eye on things and make sure i line up properly there you can see what i mean no that's not snow that is not how it's supposed to be and here i am landing some trees right up front here Okay, and a little bit low on the fuel, 
but that's as it should be. That is intentional. Anyway, so that is the progress made in my flight around the world with the F-104. This was flight 12, and so there's plenty more to come. The challenge continues as this plane is always interesting to fly and of course the problems with the flight model just make it more difficult. The fact that I have to dip down and manage my fuel extra properly and do extra flights. So yeah, anyway, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.